Hi, everyone, and welcome to the third installment of the GoMobi.Work coaching series, where each week we bring you a topic in coaching that will help you become a better leader, a better manager, a more effective person at work, and hopefully in a lot of the other things that you do in your life. Um, it's our purpose with this to share knowledge with you so that you can bring this back and use it with the people that are, you're around, whether that's your team or anybody else that you're interacting with regularly. Um, we hope that these skills and these tactics and these ideas can help you become more effective. And that's why we're doing this series. So thanks for watching and we're glad you're here. Um, I am, my name is Wade Bruffy and I am the founder and CEO of GoMobi.Work. And I'm joined by my co-founder here and our chief coaching officer, Mr. Zoltan Sarda. Zoltan, say hey, hello. Hey everybody. Uh, good, to, good to have you all join us. I hope this is a, a, another useful installment here, uh, getting kind of deeper and deeper into strategies and techniques and ways to think about coaching. So yeah, gladly. absolutely. Good point there, Zoltan. We, we have all of these on YouTube. So if you're just seeing this one, go visit our YouTube channel and you can see the previous episodes that we've recorded and they're all up there for you. So Take a look. Let us know which one's your favorite. Leave us a comment. Uh, we love hearing from you. So uh, this week, we have a topic that we're really excited to talk about, uh, something that we feel like is pretty important and often overlooked. So this is data and performance improvement. And so when we talk about performance improvement, it's performance improvement is sort of a ubiquitous thing in business. We know that we need to be giving people feedback on their work. We know that we probably should be doing an annual performance review at the very least. Um, and what we found is with a lot of our clients and speaking to the people uh, that are also people development professionals is that there are some significant opportunities to do this better. And so that's why we wanted to put this uh, talk together for you. And so we hope that over the course of the next half hour or so that you learn some strategies that you can take back to how to think about doing performance improvement from a data-driven perspective and what are some of the ways you can make that data process more effective. So thanks for being here. Okay. And so we'll kick this off. And I think one of the ways to think about this, you know, think about it in terms of data, we're collecting data, but it's also thinking about it just in terms of information, like what is what's the information that we're wanting to gather to help uh, our coaching and then also the people that we are coaching. Um, so this is a quote from Anders Ericsson. Uh, uh, Anders wrote, uh, Peak, the secrets from the new science of expertise. He's the most uh, well-known for his uh, work in deliberate practice. Uh, his work was sort of the core of Malcolm Gladwell's book on the 10 or the article on the 10,000 hours rule. Um, his Anders Ericsson's work uh, goes a lot deeper than that. Fortunately, he passed away a couple of years ago, but he was definitely a hero of uh, ways of mine. Uh, but again, just in terms of what he's talking about in terms of performance improvement or uh, that idea of get outside your comfort zone, but do it in a focused way with clear goals, a plan for reaching those goals and a way to monitor your progress. And then I like this last piece. Oh, and figure out a way to maintain your motivation. So we've talked a little bit in the past about this idea of clear goals with that focused way of doing this work. Um, but I think today we're really talking about what's the way to monitor progress. And really, if we think about um, monitoring our progress, it's monitoring and get, having information into what we're, what we're doing is a way to maintain our motivation as well. Uh, sometimes uh, when we're in a situation where we have sort of a vacuum of data or a vacuum of information, it's it's hard to stay motivated in those situations. So one of the ways that we think about this, you know, a lot of this work comes around the world of athletics, like super high performing athletes. They have, um, and I, we really believe that there's parallels, and Anders Ericsson talked about this a lot as well, that there's parallels between what athletes do and any, any aspect of trying to improve performance. There, there's commonalities across them. But as a mindset for this talk today, thinking about data and information, uh, what do athletes do and what do their coaches do? There, there's ongoing collection of data and monitoring and analyzing that data from every single coaching session. So that they, an athlete and their coach never come away from a uh, session without looking at some kind of data. And that data collection and that analysis is mutual. It's collaborative. They're both bringing their perspectives and uh, and data sources to that. 
And so for an athlete, what are those uh, factors that they might be monitoring uh, in terms of uh, improving their practice? So they might be focusing on skill and technique, like what's what's that the next best way to jump or that stride that's going to get you a little bit faster down the track? What's the diet Im implications of your diet or stress and sleep? What are the uh, recovery and uh, issues between workouts? And we also think, you know, a lot of the, a lot of outside of the world athletics. Now there's a lot of people who are using wearables, you know, sleep monitors, heart monitors, uh, glu uh, continuous glucose monitors. So they're giving, giving you continual sources of, data and information that help you inform what your behaviors are and your ways of, you know, it could be something that related to what you're eating. It could be like what time you go to bed, it could be the amount of uh, drink that you're, you know, alcohol that you're in, in taking, any of those kinds of things. And so that information is used by us on a regular basis. And so our concept here is how do we pull this more, uh, make it more of a ubiquitous part of the coaching session. And, um, Again, that idea is how a big question here is how can data be tracked session by session to inform new directions, goal setting, goal setting, that kind of thing. Wade talked about the annual review. Um, it's our opinion that that's not enough uh, to to really inform direction, really inform practice. That it needs to be much more ongoing uh, and in every se every single session, the data needs to be collected and analyzed. So, um, and again, this idea that information is power, power is motivational. And so uh, keeping that in mind, uh, how, do we, how do we bring information into every one of our sessions when we're working with folks? Um, and then um, a couple of questions. So again, this, is, this talk today is really about not giving you answers on exactly how to do this, but thing, ways to think about your thinking about this work. Um, so, how the question here for our talk today is how can ongoing collection analysis and monitoring of data support the work of coaches and employees in the workplace and a secondary question is what might we, we learn or what might we want to learn from the data that we're collecting um, so those are sort of two aspects as we go into the rest of this talk and thinking about how, how do might we structure and use uh, data collection and analysis and monitoring of data Oh, you're on mute, Wade. You are you are muted. Thank you. <laughs> it's all time. We'll pause uh, here. Yeah, yeah. We get we get we get an app. Give me a move this. Okay. Yeah. Zoltan, I, I love the uh I Zoltan, I love the example that you brought up with the wearables because I that's something that so many people are getting into these days. And, you know, I'm, I'm super into it. I've got my, I've been an aura ring user for the past several years. And this is something that is becoming part of the lexicon and people are understanding the importance of having this daily information to inform how they live their life and what sorts of inputs that they, they put into their, to their body. I think this is a great example because we all have a body, obviously, and uh, it's something that we can relate to. There's things that we do that make us feel good. And there's things that we do that make us feel bad. And starting to understand those things and track that is really powerful. Um, and I think more people are starting to understand that. So great, great. Love that example. And just, just a secondary example. I'm also a type one diabetic and I wear a pump and a continuous glucose monitor and the data that's collected from those two things, plus my own data that, that I keep track of, like, what am I eating? That kind of thing. So I can actually send the data to my doctor and, you know, yep. say I've been having a good week or I've been having a bad week or whatever, what's going on that my doctor gets back to me and my doctor now becomes more of a coach rather than like a, the expert. It's like, cause That's I've right. got knowledge, I've got information. Um, she's got knowledge and information. And then it's like this shared sort of uh, moving towards, for, towards my goals for that. So it's just super useful. Wow. That's a fantastic. Great to hear. It's been All right. life been life changing. Oh, good. Well, I'm I'm happy to hear that. You're the bionic man for sure. Uh, so one of the ways, and, and Zoltan, you mentioned this too, but we wanted to use this opportunity and use this talk to talk mostly about how we are advising people to think about their thinking around data collection and the use of data and coaching. So 
uh, to, to intro that topic, uh, we want to understand a few things when we go in and we work with a, with a company, work with an organization of, of, of really any size. But we want to understand to what degree are, is data being collected first and foremost? Is this something that your team is currently taking advantage of or is this a totally new project? And we're going to talk about this, whether you've been doing this or whether you're brand new to it. It doesn't really matter because these mindset pieces that are really foundational, they don't change depending on how big your, your organization is. In fact, as you do scale up, it becomes even more important to get these right. But even as your team is small, your time is valuable. So we're going to talk a little bit about that too. Uh, the other thing that we find and, and the reason that we feel that oftentimes the annual review is really a sh uh, not enough to really inform performance improvement is because it's not used, the, the data that's generated isn't used frequently enough. So we want to understand if the organization is using the data that they have generated in other subsequent conversations, we, we like to refer to it in the context of a coaching session, because these this data can really help inform the conversation around, is this person tracking towards their goals? Is this, it, are we understanding what kinds of resources might be needed across our entire team? Uh, are we understanding what resources might be needed across our entire company based on higher level information? So that's something that we we, we track as well. And we want to be able to see the change in this information over time. So if we can identify trends, it's impossible to identify trends without looking at this data. So we need an effective ongoing data collection process in order to inform the, the drawing of these insights. So that's really where this, this, this has power. And it has power because we're constantly bringing in new information so that we can generate timely insights that are generated by our people that we are trying to track we know what we're looking for. So lots of stuff going on to um, uh, in the world of, of data collection. But we really want to make sure of one thing that I'm that I'm thinking of is we really want to make sure that the data that we're collecting is actionable. And so what is what do we mean by when we say we are gathering actionable data? Well, actionable data is data that we can use to make decisions. It's data that's specific. It's data that's clear. It's data that is repeatably gathered. So if we're one-offing and trying to collect a little bit of data over here, we might be able to use that to make a really specific decision. We don't, we aren't able to use that data usually to inform a systemic change. So we need to be finding this actionable information, generating this actionable information so that we can use this information and it's fairly granular to draw specific conclusions, pull these insights out and, and to make decisions based on that. So, once again, just building on this idea of this actionable information, we want to use this actionable information to in order to meet the needs of multiple audiences. Just jumping to this one, uh, the second the second point here, as we've we've already jumped in, um, the idea of multiple audiences is that we are going to need to different people in different parts of our organization or even different parts of our team need to know different things in order to be effective in their work. And so the person who is the head of the department needs different information than the person who is managing a team within the department. I think that makes intuitive sense to most people that are in an organization. Um, and the reason that we, 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 we can't always rely on uh, a, a, a data collection process that is going to require too many different inputs because if we start to um, make this in uh, this process too complicated, then it becomes a problem because people don't adhere to the process. So we need to uh, have our data collection delivering this actionable information and then be able to parse that actionable information in various ways. And ultimately the 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 result of that is that we have this, uh, better understanding of where the 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 program that we've implemented this data gathering on whether where it's working and where it's it needs further improvement. So we have um, it may not coaching may not serve a direct revenue function, but it really needs to focus in on a, a a support function. So enabling these people that are receiving the coaching to do their work much better. So. One of the ways that we talk about not spending time is we we really want our we want to encourage you 
to, and challenge you to think of data collection, not as a project, but as a process. So what does that mean? So the success is going to come when measurement is part of our routine operations. If you think about it in the sense of, if you're having a, a voice of the customer survey, if you're going out and trying to talk to as many customers as you can, that's a lot of effort. It's a lot of work. You're having a detailed interview with people. You're coming in and gathering these insights. And that's a really valuable exercise. However, you wouldn't want to constantly be doing that. It would be a, a big effort on top of your team. Um, there's maybe some really specific feedback if you're trying to get that feedback from the market, but it probably makes sense instead of doing a detailed customer interview with every person that wants to maybe write your review to take this into a more customer support function where your customer support team is gathering data on what are we receiving feedback tickets on? What are we what common problems are we dealing with when we have somebody that reaches out to us for help? So you see it as less of, and that's an analogy I'm trying to say that at, when you're thinking about coaching as a project, the biggest part of that is going to be the actual gathering of the data itself. That's 80% of the work. And 20% of the work is in, in coaching as a project is looking at the insights that are generated as a result of the of the process. So that's the key difference. And then when you think about coaching as a process, the data collection piece of it is happening all the time. It's a really simple method. You want to just have everybody be filling this out as part of their routine operating procedure. And so then you're getting a lot of data. Maybe it's a little bit more simple data, but you can parse it out in many different ways. And so 80% of your time can then be spent on figuring out what are all the ways that this data has meaning. So you're making it easier for you to uh, spend more time thinking critically about what is the impact of all this rather than spending too much time hustling around trying to collect all the data. And then if it's too hard of a process, maybe not that many people even engage in the process. So that's really the way that we think about it and coaching as a process being a much more effective long-term strategy in order to build a successful data collection program. Yeah, and I, I like what you said, Wade, about the data being sort of, it's maybe a bit more simple, but it's a bit more actionable. So that idea of your data set is smaller. So like if I'm thinking about coaching a team of five employees and I have monthly meetings with them, that's a fairly small data set for me to look at that can then that I can then say, okay, I'm gonna we're gonna apply that rather than like this huge data set that we have to analyze and think about how it works for each of the individual people that were employees in our in our company. Yeah, exactly, Zoltan. So just yeah. to end this section with a question, which one of these do you find would be more effective? Would you rather spend most of your time gathering data and not as much of your time analyzing it? Or would you rather spend as much time as possible figuring out what does this mean for us and how can we act on this information moving forward? How can we improve our processes using this data? That's the question for you. So when we talk about the needs for a successful coaching process, we really want to talk about first and foremost, and we talked about this just a moment ago, really is this efficient and collaborative data collection process. So let's key in on those two adjectives right there. Efficient, we want to make this frictionless. We want to make this something that the, the employees and their managers and everybody in our organization isn't thinking too much about. Like this is just part of their routine. When they're in their one-on-one -on -one meeting, they're in their coaching session, they are able to quickly capture that information that we've decided as, a, as an organization is important and that we want to clue in on some of these things so that we can then gather the insights, but it shouldn't be hard for them to do that. So that's what we mean by efficient. Um, we also want to try to standardize that as much as possible so that we're not getting we're not asking one person a specific thing because then it's not comparable to anything else. Like we need it to be efficient. We need everybody to be playing the same game. So that's what we mean by that. And collaborative, um, collaborative is something that we've talked about in a, in a previous talk, but to, to recap the way we think about this, collaboration is, is creativity. So we're trying to enable this idea that uh, the data collection process between the coach and the person who's being coached is really a, a, a back and forth. There's a there's a um, 
There's a process of questioning that maybe is led by the coach, but both of these uh, people who are participating in the session, participating in the one-on-one -on -one, are both working together to generate the best data possible. So it's part of a conversation. So we're, we're collaborative in that sense. And so just to reiterate, both the participant and the coach are generating this data. And it's interesting to look at sometimes how these things can contrast. And the way that we advise people to do this and the way our system is built is we can give drop-down menus because of picking a choice or maybe multiple choices, however that looks like, is actually a really easy way to just give people a quick UI that they can plug in different answers to different questions that your team wants to track. And then when you have questions selected like that, it becomes really easy to standardize and to draw insights from those. You can perform an analysis when you're looking at choices. With notes, which are important for the session review, we wanna make sure that people are referring back to previous sessions, et cetera. Maybe you do take a look back at your notes once a month, once a quarter, just to kind of review what's going on in there um, and maybe inform other questions. But it's harder to standardize and build uh, visual representations of the data that's held in the notes because it's not a consistent thing across everybody. It's just what people are thinking. So another key part of this that's really important and foundational really before you even start going about uh, doing a data collection process is that there needs to be a very clear link between what optimal performance looks like for your organization and what people are working on. So people need to understand when they walk into a coaching session, this is how our definition of optimal, this is how I need to live up to our definition of optimal performance. And if I am living up to those things, that should then relate to the goals that I'm working on at, as part of this company. So we, we encourage people to get these definitions in place beforehand because it's hard to, it leads to this disappointment and this sense of uh, confusion. We like to often refer to it as WTF syndrome. When your expectations are not clear and you're just left sitting there like, why, what, what is going on? I don't know. So that's how we think about uh, the, the clear definitions and, and they should link to the employee goals. A person should understand by doing this, I will be more effective in getting to where I want to go. And finally, the training prep piece is so important. We Part of the reasons that we wanted to do these this weekly meeting is because uh, we think training is so important. You can learn these coaching skills. So we training is a super vital piece. That's why we have dedicated coaches that go and work with our clients. We recommend that regardless of the, uh, the service that you decide to use, that Training and, and continuing development and continuing education around how to effectively gather this data and be a great coach is some a part of the process, just continually building these skills because being more competent is a driver of motivation. Yeah. And I really appreciate what, how you were described on, on all these points, sort of that interaction piece that's going on because it's really um, a lot of what we're getting at here is like this idea of calibration between the coach and the employee like they're they're both speaking the same language and they both have the same definition so i could bring you if you're coaching me i could bring some data or some evidence of what i see as my performance and you might bring some that you're seeing and then the conversation around those two pieces actually lead us to get to like oh now we both understand like how how these uh both these pieces of data relate to my performance or lack of performance Right. Um, and there's much more of that dialogue uh, that, I, that you know, you and I've talked about this so many times. That's, that's the key part. Yeah, it's so true. And, and, and I think the, the focal point of having that clearly defined performance guideline or clearly defined, I don't want to say expectation because it's, it's, it's not, you're not going to be perfect at it every time. And it's, it's oftentimes something that we're all continually improving on. So, it, but, but the performance definition and the performance, like, okay, I understand that that's what needs to be done. It also gives you something to really focus on knocking out of the park, which is highly enabling in, in the role. And so actually, if you go to the next slide, Z, we, one of the things that we find so powerful about this is if once the organization is, is able to note the trends and the needs across the organization, it really gives you the opportunity to identify these professional learning opportunities because you're 
able to under, you're able to say, these are the things that set us apart. This is how we're able to drive success. And so if there's a, a specific, if you're not looking at the data, how do you know at a systemic level or company-wide or team-wide level where people are faltering? Where, where do people need additional support in order to be great at what they do? And so if you're gathering this data as part of a routine system, you can start to say, oh, well, people are not feeling confident enough in their sales calls, or people are people on our engineering team are not really feeling like they have the ability to be innovative. We can, we can drill into some of these things and we can start to address some of these challenges that we maybe even didn't know existed because people don't always vocalize this stuff unless it's really, you know, part of a company's culture. And it's one of the things that the best companies do really well. Um, if you've ever worked with a leader who's genuinely open to feedback, uh, it's a really powerful thing. And, uh, you know, the opposite side, somebody that says I'm open to feedback, but then they get upset if you have a contrarian point of view, like that's very disempowering and it's going to turn, shut off your whole team because if you, you need to be giving them the opportunity to do that. So really this, this idea of targeted professional learning, it's, it, it's going to increase the effectiveness of your team dramatically. And it's going to increase the efficiency of the budget that you do use on professional development, because you'll know exactly, okay, this is what our data is telling us. This is where we need skills. And most teams are just operating and kind of letting the manager decide who needs to be trained. And, you know, it, it may be throwing a, a thing that everybody has to do this, or everybody gets to do this training, um, when maybe some people need a little bit different training. And, you know, maybe it would even be cheaper to do two different ones that are more specified than one big one that everybody does. And, you know, that's how a lot of these things work. So, and once again, the goal here is always to just increase the motivation and make sure people are feeling competent and capable because that's a really powerful thing. And uh, people love working for businesses where they feel really, really connected and supported. So that's what we are looking at there. So finally, um, we have our, uh, what areas should we track? So this is a common question. We have a lot of people that are doing coaching for the first time. They're setting up their first program. And so they have no idea what should we coach on? And we think that's a great question. So, uh, a couple areas, there are a handful of areas that we thought of were employee skills and, and their knowledge. Uh, it's always helpful to, and maybe you don't ask everybody the same question across departments, but you can uh, you can use customized questions to address certain needs. And maybe it's productivity. Maybe that is a more standardized question. How well, how productive is our team across everybody? And then also engagement and well-being are really important. It's something that uh, employees are wanting more and more every, every year. And, and really the organizations that are succeeding a lot today are doing this really, really well. So that's what, uh, th those are some ideas and thoughts for you to uh, get your data collection started and some things that your team could start coaching on today. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Wade. And I, again, I think um, just a closing thought here, you talked earlier about um, that idea of how do we get resources and the, you know, what the employees need to do. Develop. And so if you have really clear areas of focus and then the data can help you say, so, so for our employees don't have the, knowledge, the skill and knowledge that they need in this particular area. So what are the resources they need or what do they need to be more productive um, and really make sort of targeted decisions about bringing those resources into the organization? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a it's an area like I we're kind of in this weird economic time, right? Where um, people are really concerned. Maybe I don't have the budget that I thought I was going to, or you know, maybe we're slashing our budget. Well, it's more important than ever to have information. We need to be able to say like this is the real key thing that we're not doing right now that we need to be doing better in order to stay afloat and even to thrive in this. Uh, in these uncertain times. So that's really uh, a powerful thing and something that should not be overlooked regardless of the of the time. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you for joining us again. It's always a pleasure. Um, and 
again, we hope that these uh, are useful in your, in, in your thinking on uh, both coaching practice and supporting employees. And we will see you next week. Yes, we will. Thanks, everyone.